it really shapes you as a person when you see someone like you forgive yourself for that and just move to the next one like we are our surroundings Bye. did you have anyone maybe at cal arts or maybe in your own life that helped you or like helped shift your mindset and overcome that kind of debil debilitating fear yes i i definitely think that you know if you have to go through the adventure on your own that's fine but the more the merrier um because we really like there are certain things that we can't do without others you know there are things that we really just need that experience like i don't know what would have happened if i didn't meet my friends like um I, I'm really grateful that I met those girls because they, um, you know, with uh, each of them taught me something different, you know, and I think like, especially Gabby, who was kind of like a mentor to me in a way, because she was older, but we had similar experiences. And I remember I wasn't very confident, you know, I wasn't very confident in myself and seeing someone who had gone through all those things and come out for the better really, really motivated me and really made me grow and just it 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 really shapes you as a person when you see someone like you you know and it's it's just crazy because in so many ways we're so different me and my friends but they all were confident young women who were being really unapologetically themselves and creating their work and just living life and I was just like shit I want to be like that so it it really helped me kind of solidify my confidence in the sense that you know, I'm going to be me, I'm going to be hot and cool and sweet and who cares about anyone who thinks different. Um, and obviously, sometimes insecurities will take over and I will be in a space that I felt like when I was younger. Um, but yeah, just find folks that are non-judgmental and have similar values to you. And, you know, um, there's that quote of like, you're going to be like the average of the five people closest to you you're going to make the same amount of money as them or something like that i don't think it's about money but i think it's more about like values and how much osmosis actually affects us as people like we are our surroundings and i mean if you're someone who really struggles with i'm just going to put this out there for people who are in a shitty environment i'm really sorry um find media that you can relate to. You can have friends and characters. Like that's what I did when I was younger and it helped me um, get out of a life that wasn't right for me. And it's gonna be possible for everybody to do that through the internet. But also if you can get some friends because um, that will change your life. Yes. What do you wish you could tell um, little baby Noor Who's oh. gonna use? Who's gonna like move to the U.S. and like go to Cal Arts? What do you think she would, if you could bring her here now and show her your life? What was she scared about, and what would she love about your life now that she never mm. thought would be possible? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I remember my first year, I panicked. It was when Mike Rando was teaching, actually. I panicked during our first pitch and I ran away and like went to the bathroom and I had a like anxiety attack. And I remember Gabby wasn't even my friend then. And she went after me and got me some water and calmed me down. And she stood beside me while Mike kind of like supported me as I told my first pitch. And it was, it was a very scary thing because I remember afterwards, some classmates were kind of like, Oh, huh, are you okay? Like you should be able to do this though. Like kind of like that kind of energy. Um, or maybe I perceived it, you know, like maybe that was just how I saw things because I was so scared. Um, <clears throat> but I remember that being really something I couldn't, I couldn't pitch that year. But you know what? Now I can. I, I've pitched to like boards of people and it's amazing how that can happen if you just set your mind to improving time and time again. So I would tell her, you know what? You're going to be okay. You're going to do things you can't even imagine you can do right now. Like literally that's the way to put it. Like I could not even imagine how much I can improve. Like I read this thing that was like, don't set your goals for the next 10 years, set your goals for the next 20. Cause like you're gonna do those 10 year goals way faster than you think. And you're gonna want more. So like, it, it really just depends on what it is you aspire for. And, you know, shooting for the, shoot for the stars. Cause 
even if you you go a bit lower you'll reach the moon you know uh mm-hmm. and it's something if something that i would give advice to to my younger self i don't know i think i think things were just meant to be the way they were but if i were to give advice to someone who feels like that i would say literally like all the whole thing we're talking about today literally fear is slowing you down and just accept it there accept it and let it feel your feel it in your body and move to the next thing like that's all i would say because it's really so many of us come in eager and excited and scared and it's just about kind of pushing through that fear and getting to the other side yeah for sure i t- can totally relate to that i remember um especially with the 10 year goal thing mm-hmm. when i was younger i was 12 years old and i worked really hard on publishing a book self publishing mm-hmm. because you know it's hard to get people to trust you when you're 12 years old but mm-hmm. I always wanted to write like an award-winning book and it ended up actually winning an award. And girl, thanks. But what you're saying is so true because when I was that age, I remember telling people about all the stuff that I want to do with my life and them just blowing it off because you're young, you don't know who you are yet and all the stuff that people put on you. But I totally agree with what you say about identity. and how all of us struggle with different things maybe worse things and better but we all have something 100%. to say 100% mm-hmm. 100% like i i do like I, that's an amazing story girl like yeah. i'm impressed like it's so hard to do something like that but you did it and we all can do stuff that we want to do that we're really scared to do and it'll be way easier than we think um or not i guess um but when you get through the other side you won't regret it you'll regret the things that you didn't do you know exactly and, i hear that's it, what sorry for yeah. interrupting again no, but, but that's what it. um somebody said that's what people say on their deathbed they don't regret the things that they did they regret all the things that they didn't do that they were too scared right. to do yes and i mean it's okay if you it's okay if you let things pass like experiences or opportunities pass like forgive yourself for that and just move to the next one um me and my friend we have this thing me and victoria we were talking about like we've been trying to like um move forward with our art lately and we've just been looking at things that we want to improve and stuff and it's been so fun and you know she said this thing where she was like oh yeah like i've been trying to do personal work i for a year i don't want to make it two years you know so i think that's really cool it's just like do it for your do it for your future self as much as you're doing it for yourself right now, you know. Just try to really um solidify that work ethic and over time you will you will just be blown away by all the things you didn't know you could do. Definitely. There's this other quote, uh people underestimate what they do with a single day. Well, people overestimate what they can do with a single day, but they underestimate what they can do with their whole lives. 100%. You know, time is funny and that's why patience is so important when it comes to um cultivating something like this. It's it's over time it will sneak up on you. You know, you, your experiences multiply, you know, you can get ideas in a single in a single instant, but you need to have you need to be in the right place in the right time sometimes. You need to be doing the right thing, you know, maybe you'll be baking bread and you come up with this beautiful cottage story, you know, set up with you know bread making and friendship you know it's like things like that you just need to experience life and balance out that critical uh, voice yeah definitely totally agree is there something like currently like a project or something that you're putting off because of fear oh i mean uh of course you don't have to i mean answer if you don't want to totally <laughs> no, 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 no 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 i mean i would say I'll I'll tell you this thing that I was I not right now but literally very recently. So, yeah, like the graphic novel that I mentioned I was working on. There was a period where right before starting because we're about to pitch it and it's looking really cool so far, but right before I was about to start it, you know, getting, you know, it's it's one of those things that really really mean a lot to me and because i feel like with big projects i get really nervous 
I kind of it, it it kind of been it's we've been developing it for like a year and a half now and I feel like I could have done it faster you know it's just like I spent a lot of time being really scared to do it um and but at the same time I'm nearing the end and like I did it you know it's and getting to that point from from all those things I said was literally everything I've already told you was I was really scared. I know why I was really scared. It's because it meant a lot to me. And I didn't want to fuck up something that means a lot to me. But I knew that to get good at something, you have to fuck up. So I think I was just absolutely pissed off at that. Like, I was pissed off. I was like, I don't want, I want it to be perfect. Like, what the fuck? Um, so I would avoid it. And I think over time, you know, my poor sweet um, agent, her name is Jess. She's amazing. Love you, Jess. If you're watching this, but doubt it <laughs> um she uh she was very patient with me and you know at a certain point I kind of realized again like you're going through your own shit you have to get through it you know like I was going through some stuff and eventually uh I was like you know what this is enough is enough um I need to get this done and I set myself a deadline for like to finish it in a month and it was basically just 10 pages of art it wasn't too crazy but because of that mental resistance, it felt like so much. Um, and I just spent, I just spent the first couple of days just looking at pretty graphic novels that I like and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And just kind of like what I said, the studying element. I did some studies, and after a while, I kind of realized like this is something I really care about. That's why I'm scared. So I'm just gonna put in the hours. And I have this thing. Let me show you if I can pull it up. Um, there's this thing I was talking to my um, my friend about, which is like I really struggle with um, being. I struggle with being uh, what's the word type A. I'm not. I, I I think I'm an organized person, but not in the traditional sense, you know. So I figured out the best way for me to be cre like creative, but also productive is to make lots and lots of notebooks. Oh, oh my gosh, this is so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Instead of having like, I've tried to like bullet journal and it never worked. I would never continue to use it because it would have everything I have to do in one book. It would stress mm -hmm. me the fuck out, you know, because I have this problem where when I get in productive mode, I have to do everything at once. So mm -hmm. I broke it down. Um, so I have story and reference. I have ideas, comics and projects. I have webtoon ideas for my project that is pending but you know hopefully within the next year or so I'll develop it and I have things I want to avoid so this one's my least favorite one I just like it's called pending with a skull it's the things that you know you kind of have to do within the month or so but you keep avoiding mm -hmm. and this one is my special one which is work log so in my work log I would put in my hours I obviously ideally you'd want to get like more than two hours or something but you know it was really struggle for me so at first it was like december 14 8 30 to 9 15 9 15 to 12 12 to 2 and then i'd stop and like i just kept like putting in my hours for a while and then after a while i didn't need it because i was getting my work done for the right like for the eight hours and more or whatever um so i realized like some days i'll i can only work two hours but some days i can work 11. so it really just depends on what kind of what kind of person are you what kind of needs do you have for yourself that will help you be productive they don't have to be the traditional like oh i wake up at six and i have my kombucha at, at eight and then i go jogging and, and then i do it every day at the same time because that doesn't work for me i get mm -hmm. i get anxious i get like it starts to weigh on me to do all those things at the same time so what i do is i have specific things i want to do i want to draw i want to work out depending on the day it will either be a heavy workout or a light a light workout Either it will be two hours drawn, 20 hours drawn. That's just something that works with me because I'm kind of like, my personality is very like, I'll have highs and lows that are really high and low. So like, I try to work with that. Work with what you have, you know, work with who you are. Yeah, definitely. That's great advice. I actually, um, I have kind of the same thing sitting next really? to me. Oh my God, share, share, share. But yeah, I also have like uh, mini notebooks and stuff like that. Um, but you're totally right. Like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe we both do like, okay, wait, wait, where's my chart? Where's my chart? I want to see the chart. 
Oh, okay. But this is just for February, but you're right. You just Ooh. like put in those times I for love creative it. and all that things. And oh my God, like, yes. like you said with the 10 minute rule, I have, um, I call this like adventure cards or menu of days, but I have like all these cards for yes, like you've shown working these out to me. and like, yeah, yeah. But honestly, like, here's my thing from January, but oh you're so God. right. Like yes. it's. Like, especially the creative days, I either do, like, this one, I think I did, I did, like, six hours straight, and then this one, I did, like, Girl. nothing. So, uh -huh. you're so right. Like, that's, especially for people who um, are like that, they don't have, like, strict routine and stuff like that, it's so much more important that you're doing it rather than what you're doing. Totally exactly. agree. Exactly. Yeah, I love that so much. Like, I love your cards that you have for you, for everything that you have to do. That's so smart. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's um, like a game, like how you said. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, just make it fun. Like, find a way to get your things done, um, but also like experiment with the way you do it. Like, I think I always struggled with like not being the type of person who did everything at the same time and all the time, and it just but like i just realized like i'm a different kind of person like you have to you have to give the needs that you have for yourself and that's the way it goes yeah i'm curious because that is a weakness but um you know how our weaknesses are sometimes our greatest strength so i'm mm. wondering how does the working on everything at once what good have you seen from that like doing everything at the same time yeah, like how you, um, you're fluctuating energy levels and how you do dip so many different kinds of projects and stuff at the same time. Do you see any mm. benefits from that? Yeah, I mean, I think the benefit is very clear and simple. I feel fulfilled in my life in the sense that I am doing the things I want to do. I think, I, I mean, I touched up on that when I was talking about like making the book, like opening the page and writing the things about yourself and who you are. I think there was this really cool study that was talking about like people feel people feel um, fulfilled with three things love and friendship in their life um, so like having a family having someone you care about that could be fulfilling for some people that, that's all they need in their life there's some people who get it through success they want to succeed in whatever discipline they have and just keep improving but then there's a third one which is surviving you know especially like people like I think this psychologist was at a at a concentration camp in Auschwitz and he noticed that all these people had one thing in common it was to survive and that's so powerful you know that we have the human race wants to live on for like through so much horror and I think you know you can take from that that we need meaning in our life even if it's as simple as surviving if that's what you need right now um so for me it's like when I get through that period of surviving, if that's what needed to be done at the point, I get to the point where I'm like, okay, what am I doing with my life? I am the kind of person that I need love and affection. I can't just be work only. Um, but at the same time, I notice when it's no work, I still feel like unhappy and unsatisfied. So I think with all these projects and doing all these things, I feel, I, I just feel like, I'm doing something for myself for the, like when I see myself as an old person, I see myself painting, like making beautiful paintings that like I can't do right now. And I think that's a really powerful image that I want to work towards because even if I'll be alone, I'll have, hopefully, <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, but like, you never know. But like, uh, anyway, that's the kind of, that's my ideal. You know, I think that's something that I want to have in my life. I think studying for the sake, you know, that feeling you get when you figure something out, it's so satisfying. So I think it's kind of like chasing that emotion and just kind of seeing things grow. And just when you feel like you're in that cycle, it just feels really good. And like I said, there will be periods where you get blocked off, kind of like where you're cynical and you, you think things can't go, go right. And then there's that period where you realize no matter even when they, you can get through tough tough things and it kind of goes into that like little joy bubble and it keeps going like happiness isn't something that stays it's always in flux and 
really um i think the benefit of doing all these things all at once or i mean it doesn't feel like that to me i really just it's really just about like starting with one thing and just watching it grow um and for me that one thing was always like i think for me my life mission or whatever is to make people who on like people like me feel less alone you know i think that's something i wanted when i was a child i felt so alone and books were my savior so like to be that for someone whether it's you know through my middle eastern like comics or my more you know more like emotional like dealing with depression thing like whatever it's just like i just want to kind of go through that and just kind of like like there is this quote that i was like kind of like we're all just blinking lights to be like do you feel this way do you feel the same way too is this is this how you feel am i not alone like it's kind of like we're all just looking for something like that yeah for um, sure oh there's also this other quote where it's like i'm 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 putting messages in a bottle so i'm peck i'm desperate for connection yet picky on who gets the message it's kind of like that Ooh. yeah oh that's and- good <laughs> That's You're really right. good. Yeah. Right. And I think that's how I feel. Like I don't care if like some I don't know, someone who reads my comics or stories or whatever looks at it and like I don't like you're not you're not my audience, you know? It's okay. Mm-hmm. Um but I know there's people like me because holy shit, there there has to be. Bye. Bye. Bye.